They turned the worst scratch game into a masterpiece. But how? Let's go back. I've worked on dozens of collabs in the past, but only one has ever been successful. Everyone started with so much motivation, so much energy, and high spirits, but they all ended up failing. Eventually, I stopped trying altogether. Until today. In this video, I decided to face my fear. But there is one twist. We cannot communicate throughout the entire process. That means that this game gets passed from one developer to the next with no talking, no planning, and just one hour for each person to do their part. Oh yeah, and it was decided that I would be going first. Could the other seven developers fix arguably the worst scratch game that I had ever made? I still cannot believe what they created. So the game is called Rubble. So in Rubble, you are a mole. And now you're thinking, okay, we have a mole. Like, like what are we gonna do with the mole? Well, basically, there's gonna be this soil, right? This dirt, this rubble, if you will. See what I did there? <laughs> rubble. So the mole is gonna go down into this soil or rubble. You might be thinking now. So he goes into the rubble. What is he doing? Well, there are gonna be some bugs. A bug here. I don't know what bug that is. Just use your imagination. Oh, shoot. I started off by finding some mole pixel art online. I decided that it would be wise to just use something random off from Google for the time being. Pixel art can take an hour in itself and we do not have that kind of time to waste. The next thing that I did was create some dirt that would act as the ground for the game. I just drew a rectangle in the scratch editor for the same reasoning as the mole. Now it was time to start coding. I decided to just steal a platforming engine from my game Railroad Runner and I was able to adjust it to Rubble. Although Rubble wouldn't be a platformer, I used the platforming engine to create this effect that made you sort of jump into the ground. I think it looks really good and although I probably should have prioritized creating the actual game instead of polish, it's a nice touch. All right, I'm gonna be honest with all of y'all right now. We have 39 minutes and 37 seconds left. It's, it's, it's a lot of pressure. There's some things that I need to complete because we're not gonna be communicating or else other developers won't know that they need to add them in. I'm feeling a, a bunch of pressure right now. This one hour is going by way too quick. Uh, yeah. Let's do this. However, this took super long, and by the time I was done, I had only around 20 minutes left, so I knew that I had to hurry up. I continued coding by creating a wall that the player cannot pass through. This was a core feature of the game and would help give it more flavor and challenge. But something I noticed was that the collisions were flawed and didn't actually work very well. Sometimes you would clip into it. I was thinking about fixing it, but then decided that I would just let the other seven devs deal with it because I still needed to add in a lot of other features. The next thing that I did was create some bugs for the game. Since I'm pretty sure that moles eat bugs, I thought adding them would help add a sense of meaning and purpose to the game. Once again, I didn't care about art, so it looks quite bad. Now, with only around 12 minutes left, I created spikes that the player would have to avoid. They kill you and force you to restart. I spent my remaining minutes adding some finishing touches, and now it was time to pass it on to the next developer, McTonk. I wish that I had used my time more wisely, but it's not like I could go back in time, so I decided to stop dwelling on it. Alright, so Viper has finished his part, and now it's been passed on to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, download this. Okay, so it looks like this game is called Rubble. I already have amazingly high hopes. Uh, <laughs> okay, press space to start. Collect as many bugs as you go down. Try not to die. Collect as many- there's one! And now I'm moving up! Bro, what is this? That's not even a bug. It, wait, is it supposed to be a snake or like a worm? It's just like Viper's logo. So he didn't make this art uh, replace later. After I'd finished checking out the project, it was time for me to start adding to the game. The first thing I tried to add was a path that looked like it was being dug by the mole, but because I have a major skull issue, I decided not to as I would probably be wasting my entire hour on failing to implement a feature. After I realized that it would probably be stupid to make that unnecessary polish, I went into GIMP to design some title art which could be used in the main menu as opposed to whatever this is. Unfortunately, I couldn't make a thumbnail because all of the sprites basically just had placeholder art, but I just messed around for a bit until I got this is the title. And honestly, despite the fact that it probably only took me like five minutes to make, I think it looks pretty good. I really hope that it doesn't immediately get replaced. <laughs> I began to program in the menu, but because that's probably not the most interesting thing to watch, I'm just gonna skip past most of that. And then I started to make more bugs, because just this isn't really sufficient. Okay, so we have this so far, but it still feels horribly dead in here. It still feels horribly dead in here because there's no music. So let's get some music. Let's see what sounds good. 2,000 years later.
For both the bugs and the spikes, I made them both randomly spawn around the map, and they each have random properties like their size. Well, when we start the game, we're gonna have 25. Let's go ahead and uh, get, get some bugs. Um, okay, that's good. This is fun, just drawing the little bugs. After drawing the bugs, I made WASD support, polished some of the game, and added this little area at the end. Uh, I don't really know what I was thinking when I was adding this, though. Anyways, um, that's my part, and I'm passing it on to, uh, no idea who, so I'm gonna put in editing. Jackson Academy. Oh yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Alright, see ya. Now it's my turn. I set my timer for one hour and I got to work. So the first thing I wanted to do was add an infinite scrolling background because I just don't want to make levels. Most of my games are infinitely scrolling. It's just way easier to code in. So I went into the player sprite and tried to find the code that was stopping the player at the bottom of the level. Now I'm going to be completely honest. The code in the player sprite was an absolute mess. There were just so many variables and there was just stuff all over the place. Whoever had the project before me, these guys were literal code goblins and I had to clean up this whole mess of code and neaten it up and everything. Okay, so first off, I'd like to say sorry to Sully for my extremely messy code. Uh, this honestly was just due to my poor coding habits that I've developed over the years. But if you want to make new, better coding habits and want to learn coding for yourself, then Cody is perfect for you. Cody is not only the sponsor of this video, but they are also the platform if you want to learn how to code for absolutely free. There are over 1 million users doing it better with Kodi, and I can assure you that you do not want to miss out. Unlike most other platforms that have only 8 options and 30 day trials, Kodi is completely free. Absolutely no cost. You have access to their hands-on courses that make you learn by doing. Their platform has an actual coding interface, which means that you are actually coding while doing the lessons. Kodi offers structured learning journeys, guiding users from beginner to more more advanced coding skills in a multitude of languages, all while still being bite-sized and easy to do in one sitting. Cody also has a streak system similar to that of Duolingo, and that's coming from someone who has a 512 day streak. This is like not edited, this is like actually my streak, I'm actually so proud of myself. Cody also has a premium version if you want to learn without the limits, but the free version still has access to all of the courses and all of the features that I've mentioned so far and more to try everything that Cody has to offer for free. Yes, free, not a trial or subscription. Click on the link in the description. And also thank you, Cody, for sponsoring this video. So there was this block right here. I think it was this one that was stopping the player once it reached the bottom of the level. When I deleted it, it didn't do anything for some reason. So I just continued looking for the code that stopped the player at the bottom of the level. 10 minutes later. Yeah, I couldn't figure out why the level was stopping at the bottom, but I got started on the enemies. I don't know if McTonk didn't have enough time or if the level was supposed to be like this, but there were only 10 enemies in the level, so I made a variable to start spawning them infinitely. For some reason, it wasn't working. It had been so long since I had created this code before from one of my games that I was really rusty. Like you can see here, when I press the green flag, the game is supposed to run and start spawning some enemies, but it, it just doesn't spawn at all. Nothing spawns. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it's just me. All right, now we're finally getting somewhere. The enemies are not filling the entire screen. It's not making an impossible level. Now I just need to tackle this. The background does not scroll. So to make the scrolling background, there's only two costumes, so I need a third one. Let me tell you, I did not expect that this would take me almost 20 minutes to figure out. It, it just, the problems kept on piling on and it, it, was, it wasn't even different problems. It was the same problem where the background would scroll but the grass would also scroll and i could tell that the previous developers weren't going for that because at the start of the game you start above the ground and then you sort of jump into it i like that and i want to keep it so after moving around my code i figured out
out that it wasn't something wrong with my code, but the code that had already been created by McTonk. The variables weren't resetting properly, so I had to go in and manually reset them. Instead of resetting them inside of a broadcast block, I had to use when green flag clipped. Then, with only about 20 minutes left, I started adding some of my ideas to the game. I had this idea of adding jewels to the items that you pick up, so I started drawing some gems like an opal and also a ruby. Now, my art skills aren't exactly the best, so for the developers that go after me, they might not have a single clue what I just added, but hopefully the point gets through that these are gems. And since I didn't really have that much time left, I really hope that someone could expand on the idea that you go mining as well as eating bugs. So with 7 minutes left, I could finally add another essential feature, the game over screen. The developer before me didn't have enough time to create it, or they spent all of it creating an unnecessarily fancy menu screen. So I quickly finished up the game over screen and then ran into another bug. So that's basically all the time that I have. Now that all the bugs are fixed, it's time to pass it on to the next developer, Challenger 10k. So after playing the project, I found some things that would be easy to improve to make the game better. The first thing is to change this ugly variable score, and then to a nice number sprite score. To do that, I watched the Griff Pack tutorial because I don't know how to do it myself. After a while of mucking around, I made my own version of the system. Now that the score is looking clean, I added in a sound for when you collect a bug, and now it was trying to fix too. When you started the game, everything would look fine, but when you got a little bit in, all the bugs would stop spawning, so I located the issue and fixed that. Another issue was the wall. Due to Scratch not letting me scroll things off stage, this was stuck at the top and was really annoying me. To fix this, I added another wall off screen so it could scroll properly. The next thing I wanted to add was a difficulty option. The harder you made the game, the closer together spike was formed, making it harder to get past. I got to work on this and added the same sine wave to the title pad to it. By the time I finished, my time was almost up. There was just one more thing I wanted to add. Sometimes when you started, a spike would spawn right under you and due to the mole jumping down, it would die in the first second. Quite unfair, so I added a weight block into the spike so this wouldn't happen. Now that was done, my part was finished, and it was time to move it on. Right, it's my turn. Okay, so the sprite work here is very vector. I hate these. I'm gonna have to redo this. Okay, well, this costume is called replace later, so I'm gonna have to replace it. I'm gonna just get rid of all these blocks that do nothing, because they do nothing. So first I'm gonna improve this player sprite, because it sucks. It's so, so bad. Let's change its size to 500, shall we? Kill that. I'm basically not gonna change a lot about the game part of this game. I'm just gonna change the sprites, because I am the art guy. And although I can do other stuff, I consider myself good at art. This is not even the song that he uses. Huh? Yes, yeah, so what is this? Get rid of it. It's, that's a lot of space. This isn't even centered. I'm gonna have to resort to press green flag to a try. I'm so sorry, guys. I'll see if I can improve that later. Do I have any good fonts on my computer, or do I need to go grab one? Oh, uh, ooh. Ah. Uh. This is bringing me pain. Oh, that color's horrendous. Oh my gosh, it's worse than I thought. Oh, ooh. I'm in immense pain. Making everything. That was what? Why is this like way far away from where it's supposed to be? Seriously? I'm giving up on doing pixel art for this. Everything is already vector. <laughs> All right, my time is up. Hello everyone, I'm Spurt and I'm the sixth developer. So without further ado, let's get started. Right, the first thing I did was I opened up the project and I was just looking around to see what it was like. And first impressions are very, very positive. I really like the music in the background and also the sound effects. I think this looks really cool and I'm super excited to see what I can do. The first improvement I made was adding some nice little clouds in the background. I think that this adds some personality to the game and makes the main menu screen more entertaining. I also added a little bit of parallax to make the clouds look better. 
The next change I made was to these little spike guys. Right now, they don't seem to have much personality. They just look like a piece of wood with some spikes sticking out of them. So I gave them some little eyes, and I think they look much better now. I also decided to add more variety to the little gemstones you collect. Since we are not allowed communication on this project, I have no idea what the gems are supposed to be for, other than maybe for a score counter. Anyhow, I decided to just copy one of the existing gemstones and paste it in and make some little changes so there's a bit more variety to the types you can find. But as I was playtesting, I realized one major thing that was missing, which were enemies. Sure, there are some little spikes here and there, but they were static. So my big idea here was to add a snake that can move around through the underground and try to hunt you down. So I got to work. Alright, this is not my proudest creation of art, but I think it'll look good enough for a test. And nope, there's definitely a few bugs here. Let me fix that real quick. Alright, this looks much better. Now as you can see, the snake actually moves underground pretty well, and it can make for a more challenging obstacle than just some basic spikes. But unfortunately, my time is almost up. Since we only get one hour to work on this, I only have a few minutes left. So, I decided to make some final changes. First, I made the snakes spawn differently depending on the difficulty level. So if it was easier difficulty, they'd spawn less often, and if it was a harder difficulty, they'd spawn more. And next, I also made it so that the player's skin would look different depending on what difficulty was selected. This way, it's actually easier for players to see what difficulty they're playing on, and also, it makes it feel a lot more polished and personalized. So that was all my time used up, here's what I came up with. I personally think it looks very awesome, and I can't wait to see what the next developer can come up with. I started by opening the game and playing it to see what I was working with. Normal mode. There's snakes and you have to collect things. The music's like, really loud. I had an idea to add skins to the game, so I started out by creating these arrows that you can use to choose your skin. Next, I started to design one. I edited the player costume to be the square guy, and also made costumes for each of the difficulty levels like the circle has. Then I made this yellow trapezoid thing. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I like it. Once the skins were all finished and working, I started brainstorming some ideas of more things to add. The game was practically finished when I got it, so it was a bit challenging to think of something. I decided to make a potion that spawns less frequently than the bugs, and gives you 3 points when you collect it. And I'm also gonna make it bigger. Then, since the game is underground, I made a pickaxe that works the same way. That's a pickaxe. Finally, I added unique sound effects to each of them. There were just a few minutes left, so I decided to add the usernames of everyone who worked on the game to the main menu. So that's all the names. One minute left in the timer. Is there anything else we can really do here? And with that, the game was finished. Can we see the final version? Could someone screen share so I could see? Oh, that's done. cool. I like the main menu. I like the main menu. Wow. Okay. Just so just we keep, we keep the effect. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I like the snake. Oh, wow. That snake is cool. Yeah, okay, nice spike. It's a Viper reference by me. But you can collect yeah. Fulchat Labs. Yeah, Viper, you remember how bad yours was? Yeah, I did. I wish it was they, like shocking. Whoever knew, whoever changed what the player into a like a person and not a mole, they need to be arrested. But uh, exactly. the rest that is that was mob. That was definitely not me. Yeah, like, like why? why?